One of the wonderful perks that I have with what I do here doing YouTube videos that are predominantly based around getting the most from our Line 6 Helix is I have a lot of folks that will send me messages and ask me questions and it kind of acts as a barometer of how people view their Helix, how they're using their Helix. And I get a pretty good feel for certain issues that might be more widespread than a lot of folks know. There's a lot of folks out there who have an extremely good handle on their Helix. They know exactly how to use it for their purposes and they get the exact results they want. But anytime we have something like a Line 6 Helix, which can be a complex piece of gear with all of the options we have. Sometimes there are issues that arise and maybe folks are thinking that they're using it the proper way, but they aren't really, and they could be getting more out of it. Now, the topic of today's video is a very common problem that I've seen, and I'm sure we can all admit that we have made this mistake without noticing it and then go, oh my goodness, I can't believe I almost did that, myself included. And you might ask what I'm talking about. Well, I'm talking about stereo versus mono presets and stereo versus mono blocks and the proper implementation of those so that we are certain we're getting what we want out of our preset. Now, you might be asking what I'm even talking about in detail here, but let's go over to HX Edit without wasting another second and take a look and see exactly what I'm talking about. And I hope that this opens your eyes to how we can think about our signal chain and how we can route our presets in a manner that is going to work better for us. All right, so here we are over in HX X edit and I have a what might seem like a bit of an odd preset here, but let me just give you a quick rundown as to what we have here. I have a snapshot called stereo and mono. Now, when I switch between them, you'll notice that none of the blocks change. So it seems like what's actually happening here. Well, let's run through this first and foremost. On both paths, I have a guitar input with the input gain on the threshold at minus 48 dB, decay of 100 milliseconds on the gate, guitar input impedance set to auto and guitar pad off. I also have a stereo dual delay on each path with the identical settings. This is where things get weird though. I have dual amps up here on the top path, both a placator clean with identical settings. And down here on the bottom path or path B, I only have one of those amps, again, with the identical settings though. So because I have that, we also have these split blocks and merge blocks, which we'll talk about in a second. But up on top, I have a dual cab block up here on top. And down here, I have a single cab block. So you'll notice that I'm calling snapshot one stereo. Now, the reason being when I'm on that, you'll notice that the output block here, which is snapshot enabled, goes to plus four dB. While on that snapshot, the bottom path goes to minus 120 dB or turning it off essentially, so that there is no sound coming out of that path. Now, when I switch over to mono, you'll notice that this path down here, which is essentially mono, will bounce up to the matching plus 4 dB that we had up on the top path and the top path, the stereo path, goes down to minus 120. So basically, when I'm on the stereo snapshot, we're hearing this top path A in stereo. And when we are down here, we're basically hearing the same preset as up here, but in mono, and we're not hearing this anymore. So I hope that that's clear. And we can really hear that just by this little example. If I play anything here in the stereo path, you should hear this delay, this dual delay bouncing back and forth. You'll notice that I have the left and right mix both at 50%, left note sync at a quarter note, right note sync at an eighth note, so we can hear them bounce back and forth. Now you'll have to be listening on something that will allow you to hear stereo or this is not going to work for you. Preferably headphones, you'll really hear that bouncing back and forth. Now, if I switch to the mono preset, you'll hear basically the same tone. But even though I have this stereo delay, I'm not getting the stereo anymore. Everything is just kind of dead up the center. Back to the stereo. Okay, so here's the question that arose when I did a video about the four voice chorus earlier this week. I put a mono version of the four voice chorus before the amp, and I mentioned that we wouldn't put a stereo instance before an amp because it would be silly. It would just get some to mono, and I had some comments on that. People were going, oh my goodness, I used to put my stereo 
effects before my amp not realizing that they were just being summed down to mono. So that is a problem a lot of folks have. And listen, I can be just as guilty as anybody as to coming, let's say, after a preset where I want something in stereo and I grab, you know, I go to my modulation and I come down here and I say, oh, I'm going to grab the Ampeg liquefier. And I forget up here that I didn't switch this to stereo. Now, how do we know if we have a stereo block or a mono block? Well, right here, we have these two little circles that are interconnected. When we have them, that means this is a stereo block. When I change it over to a mono block, those circles go away. So any block we go to, you'll notice, we have these two circles. This is a stereo block. This is a stereo block. This is a mono block, as amps always are. And then we know with the dual cabs, they don't have the two little circles, but we know because we have two cabs that these are in stereo, especially the fact that we have the ability to pan them. So any other block here that we come to, whether it be an EQ, if we pull that up, you'll see no two little circles interconnecting. If I switch to stereo, they are there. So that's a quick way to know whether you're dealing with a stereo block or a mono block. Now, here's the thing though. I can take any stereo block, such as this delay, and think that I'm using stereo and that I'm getting a stereo preset. But if I'm feeding this into a mono block, it takes anything that is stereo about this block and it sums it to mono. So this block rightfully should be giving me this sort of bouncing left and right that I'm getting up here in this stereo snapshot. But when I switch down to path two here, even though I have the same settings, I don't get that because I have a stereo block feeding into mono blocks. So we really have to watch, especially in presets that are a little more complex. Maybe we have a whole long signal chain of a whole bunch of different effects blocks. If we have all stereo effects blocks and then one mono effects block at the end, it's going to take all those stereo effects and sum them to mono and we're going to lose maybe that big lush wide chorus we had or the ping pong delay. Now having said that, there's another good point here. Just because we have a bunch of stereo effects, does it mean that the preset in fact is in stereo? Well, it may or it may not, it really depends on the effects, but if we've done everything correctly and we have all stereo blocks throughout, we can still have situations, let's take for instance with a delay, where I can pull up maybe a transistor tape. Now, if we take this spread control basically down to zero, uh, you know, wow and flutter down to zero, there's really nothing different about this than plopping on a mono version of this. And in fact, if we go to mono, you'll notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parameters. When we go to mono, we go down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You might say, well, what have we lost? Well, when you look at it, we've lost our scale and our spread control here, right? So if I turn this off, you'll hear that if I turn the spread up because I've put this after the mono blocks I'm still going to have stereo effect here now I'll crank that wow and flutter up you can hear a very nice stereo effect to the wow and flutter versus if I take this spread down that wow and flutter gets monoized we shall say you hear the width there? You should be listening on headphones to really hear it. So by bringing this spread control down, I've really basically turned this into a mono delay. It's going to sound the same. So this is a good example of the point that just because we have a stereo block positioned properly in a preset does not mean that we are going to be getting any stereo sound. Now, coming back to the actual topic of today's though, something that's very interesting to keep in mind about all guitar amp models. Guitar amp blocks and guitar amps in real life 
are essentially mono pieces of equipment. We send a mono guitar signal into it. And I'm sure there's some exceptions if somebody wants to go dig up examples of such, but we're sending basically a mono signal out of the guitar into the mono input of an amp. Now, unless there's something within that amp circuitry that splits that sig signal and changes one side from the other, then we are just always getting a mono signal. So much like in the Helix, if we're sending a stereo block, like this dual delay, which should kind of ping pong back and forth into a mono block, it just gets summed to mono as I've already shown you. And we're just getting a mono sound, regardless of the fact that we're utilizing a stereo block. Now, if we go over to our stereo preset, things change. So basically, like we said, this path and this path are identical, except for the fact I've added a second identical amp block and a stereo dual cab. So here's the sound of this. So we really hear the stereo effect. You know, even taking this though, and if I had changed both of these parameters on the note sync to quarter notes, and then also brought down the spread control, I'm essentially going to end up with a mono delay again, right? So kind of interesting stuff, but we wanna make sure that we do hear a very stereo sound to this. Because the spread is going to be the spread of also the modulation, as far as I understand, on this particular block. All right, so how am I getting this stereo effect then? Well, and here's, and here's the thing that this is going to help us with. There are times where we may have the desire to put a block before an amp, but have it in stereo. Let's say with a chorus, and we'll look at that example a little bit later in the video. It might be a little harder to hear. I like the delay because it's so overt as far as that note bouncing back and forth. But maybe we want a chorus before an amp because we like the sound of it before the amp rather than after the amp, and that's a perfectly valid way of working. But every time we put that stereo block in to get this lush chorus, we no longer have the stereo because it gets summed to mono by the amp. Well, the secret is, in this case, or one way to deal with this would be dual amps. So what I've done is I've put exact instances of the amp on separate blocks. Now, the thing about it though is I have to come to my split block and I've got to pan this out. So balance A is gonna be going to the left and balance B is going to be going to the right. So meaning that out of this stereo block, you have to think of it as having a left output and a right output. So I wanna send the left output of this block because it's coming out of here and it's splitting so that the A output is gonna go left and the B output is gonna go right. So the left output of this is feeding one of the amps and the right output to the other. Now we're not done there. Now we have a merge block and you'll notice again, we have another pan control. I've got to pan one side left and one side right because now I've got to route this and this coming back out to my cab properly. So one side is going purely to the left, one side is going purely to the right. Then we set it up so that we now have stereo dual block. And you'll notice again the pan controls in here. And both of these cabinets I have on a 160 ribbon cap edge three inches back with all the same settings except one is panned left and one is panned right. Now what happens if I mess up the panning of any of these scenarios? So here we go. I have this beautiful delay. and we can hear the stereo bouncing. Now, if I come in and leave all the panning proper except for our split block, let's see what happens. We lose our stereo because the left and right outputs of the delay are not being routed properly. So I come back here, I go left and right, and now things are working again. What if I come to my merge block and I center those off? Again, no stereo. I lose the stereo because we haven't sent the proper left and right output to our cab block. As Soon as I put those pan controls back in the proper place for this particular scenario, it works again. Now coming over to our cab block, if I come in here and center both of these off, I've essentially created a mono cab again. 
and you'll see that we lose that stereo spread. So if I move these back, panned out, we now have that stereo sound again. So rather complicated, but we have to think of a stereo block. Any stereo block is having two outputs, a left and a right. They have to be routed properly. So first and foremost, we have to route those with our split block if we're gonna send those to two places. And when we start thinking about it, this could be used for so many different purposes. And once we start using our imagination, we can probably come up with a lot of very cool ideas. Uh, I guess you could use different amps if you so desire. I just wanted everything to be very streamlined for this. And then coming out of our two amps now, we have to make sure that we're feeding this amp up here on A over to our left, and B over to our right, and then we also have to pan within the cabs. Now, we obviously could have just put a single cab on each path, and what's so nice now in firmware 3.5 is we have these cabs that actually take up less DSP. So now we have this beautiful stereo sound, even though we have the effect before the amp. Now, I'm not trying to tell anybody they should be putting their delay before their amp. All I'm using is this as an example that if there is a block, a stereo block that we want before an amp, it will always be summed to mono if we send it into a single amp block. So here's the difference now, stereo, mono. And if we actually, I don't know if I have my trails on, I don't. Let's turn that on on both of them. And you can kind of hear as I'm switching. Even as I switch and the trails are going, everything on the mono channel gets summed to mono and sounds right up the middle. And that may be what you want. That's not the point of this video. Now, what if we turn that off and we slap in something like one of my favorite choruses, the Ampeg liquifier. Now I've put a mono block up there. I need to change that to stereo. And I'm just uh, going to set this in a way I like it here. We'll go with a low rate. I lose that big width of the stereo chorus. And come back here again. Let's do this one more time. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to copy those identical settings down here, paste them in. So even though once that does paste in there, I'm using a stereo chorus on the mono path. Turn the delays off. We have this beautiful lush chorus. Now again, if we were to just take any of these pan controls and put them to the center, we lose that stereo effect that we would think we would be getting just because we put a stereo block up there. Coming in here and taking all those pan controls back to center. We now just get more volume simply because we are summing two different sides to mono but if we volume match these they essentially sound the same because now we've taken this seemingly stereo path right stereo ampeg liquefier stereo amp stereo cab but we haven't made the proper panning assignments Therefore, we're not actually going to have the sound of a stereo effect just because we're using stereo blocks. As soon as I come back through here, pan everything out the way it was, and I'll return this back to the volume it was at. 
Now we get this nice lush stereo chorus before an amp, which may or may not be where I want it. Now what happens if we take that and move that after the amp? We get a slightly different sound, so it's really going to be up to us. A lot of people might say, well, I don't want to use dual amps, and I don't want to use all this stereo cabs and whatnot. That's going to eat up tons of DSP just so I could put my chorus before the amp. You know, some folks might just say, no, I'd rather just put my stereo chorus after my mono amp and cab and then have all stereo blocks after it, and I'm going to get a similar effect. But there are times where maybe we really, really want that stereo effects block before the amp, and in that case, this is one way we can deal with that. All right, so there you have it. I hope that that was helpful. I know it's a bit of an odd discussion, but I think it was an important one because I do get a lot of questions as I mentioned before and a lot of folks are confused about the proper routing and you can see with all the different possibilities of panning left and right between the split and merge blocks and the cabinet blocks we could very easily be under the impression that we're playing in stereo when in fact we have all the pieces in place except for maybe one and we're losing that wide stereo effect. So if that was a problem you ever had, check your settings and maybe try this setup to see if that doesn't improve your sound. Now, where would we use stereo presets? I personally, like if I'm playing live, I don't use stereo. It, it tends to not be necessary and I always go mono live. But boy, when I'm playing in the studio or if I'm playing through my studio monitors, or through headphones, boy, is it ever nice to have that width and that lush sound, but make sure that you have elements in there that are actually making it stereo. Just having a stereo block on does not necessarily mean it's going to sound stereo. We have to have some element that's going to change the tone between the left and right side so that they can actually have that stereo width. So I hope that all makes sense, and I hope that that was a helpful video. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in, and I, I really hope you got something out of that that can help you to get more out of your presets. So please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use or enjoyment out of watching it, and also please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. Thank you guys again so much for sharing your time with me. Ciao for now.